Hi, in this video I will show you how to use Node-RED to process sensor data and send it to the United Manufacturing Hub stack. Let's look again at our example setup for counting parts with an I.O. link distance sensor. The distance sensor is connected to an I.O. link gateway from IFM. The gateway is then connected to a switch and the switch is connected to our local network. The gateway provides an API, which is a way to query data from the sensor. To query, store and visualize the data, we use an industrial PC that is also connected to our local network. In the last video, we configured the United Manufacturing Hub to use its Sensor Connect microservice. Sensor Connect automatically finds the IFM IO link gateway and queries sensor data from the connected distance sensor. The Sensor Connect microservice now sends this sensor data via the MQTT protocol in a specific raw format. This format you can also find in the documentation. We now use Node-RED, running also as a microservice on our IPC, to transform the raw format. The result is a specific format comprehensible for the microservices involved in storing the data in the database of the stack. Node-RED will also allow us to implement a simple counter logic, which will use the changing distances to count the parts. Let's start by writing the IP address of our IPC in the address bar and adding colon 1880 node red. This will give us access to the node red microservice running on the IPC. Node red is open source, free and has a large community using it. You can find a lot of great tutorials online for in-depth training. This video is only scratching on the surface of what node red can really do. On the left side, we can scroll through a lot of different nodes. We will use the MQTT in and MQTT out node to receive and send MQTT messages. We drag and drop the nodes into our workspace. The MQTT in node listens to an MQTT broker and transmits the messages to our flow. The MQTT out node sends messages it got from our node red flow to the MQTT broker. Now. Let's also add a debug node to monitor all messages coming out of the MQTT in node. This node will all allow us to view messages on the right side of the window. We can connect it by left clicking and dragging to the debug node. Activate the current node setup by hitting deploy on the top right and confirm the deploy. Now we see that we get the error message missing broker configuration actually three messages because we have three unconfigured MQTT nodes. To fix it, we click on the MQTT in node, which opens a properties panel. We select the add new MQTT broker field in the server entry and click on the pencil icon to edit the new server. Now we specify the IP address of our IPC and leave the port entry at 1883. Go to the security tab Enter IA underscore node red as username and leave the password entry empty. Now hit add to add the newly configured MQTT broker. We get back to the MQTT node properties and specify IA slash hashtag as topic. This filters all incoming messages for messages with IA in the beginning. This is used by the United Manufacturing Hub for all topics. The hashtag shows that all subtopics of IA should be possible. Click on Done and the setup of our MQTT in node is ready. Hit Deploy again and we see a lot of messages coming in on the right hand side. We also see a green dot and connect it under the MQTT in node we just set up, which confirms that this node is now connected to the broker. To stop the flood of incoming messages, we can deactivate the debug node by hitting the green field on the right side, without the need of redeploying. Now we can see that the messages have a specific topic beginning with IA slash raw, indicating that it is a raw information. This needs to be formatted before it can be used by the rest of the stack. The messages payload is a JSON formatted string and contains different key value pairs. We can see the distance value and the timestep in Unix format. We can also see a switch state and information about the connection, which we will not use in this tutorial. 
Let's copy the topic and put it in the MQTT input node. Now the node will only listen to and forward messages with this specific topic. This is not always strictly necessary, but a good practice to make sure that we only get the messages we want of the specific sensor from our MQTT input node. Now we can redeploy and activate the debug node again to check that it still works. When we activate it again, we see that it still works. Our goal now is to reformat the information to the specification of the United Manufacturing Hub. You can find the specifications in the data model section of our documentation. We can delete a connection by left clicking and hitting delete. Now let's import and connect a JSON node to parse the JSON string payload. We are also using a function node, which allows us to use JavaScript. We can change the payload by typing msg.payload equals what we want. I want to send the distance as a so-called process value from the UMH data model. MSG is the object being passed by the node red nodes. When we look it up, we see how the topic and how the payload should look like. We can get the distance out of the message.payload.distance variable and need to parse it as an integer with a base 10. To do that, we use the parseIn function, specify the variable and base 10. I am also going to transmit the timestamp of our distance measurement using the same procedure. I change the topic by writing msg.topic equals ia slash factory insight slash Aachen specifying our location slash video asset specifying our production asset. Instead of video asset, you would typically see machine or station names used. In the end, we append a slash process value indicating the format and category of the message information. If you send a new combination of location, asset and variable name in the topic, like we do right here, the stack will automatically create those in the database and store the messages. No need for any extra configuration. What you send in is also what is saved by the stack. Make sure to use quotation marks for the topic to indicate that it is a string. Now the function node will receive a message, msg, from our JSON parser node. Change its payload and topic to the desired format for the United Manufacturing Hub and return it to the MQTT out node. Click Done. Open the MQTT out node to make sure the correct server is selected. We can leave the topic blank because we already specified it in the function node. Copy the topic from the function node. Click on the second MQTT input node and make sure the correct server is selected. Paste the topic into the topic field, which will allow us to check the messages coming from the flow we already created above by adding the debug node again. Hit deploy and activate the debug node. We can now see all incoming messages with the new topic and the changed payload. Perfect. Let's try to implement a simple function to count parts. This will be a little bit more complex, but bear with me. Short disclaimer, counting parts should be done with the slash count data format instead of the slash process value data format. If you use the count format, the UMH stack handles the counting logic, leading to less errors. But because the counter is well suited for an example, we are implementing it right here in Node-RED. We add a function node for the new logic and also connect it to the output of the JSON parser node. We can add code to run once when the node is started, so when you hit deploy, in the on start tab. There, we create a variable in our flow object accessible in our flow, called counter, and initialize it with zero by typing flow.set counter zero. Let's also create a variable called previous and a variable called current initialized with zero. Now we switch to the on message tab. This is where the code is executed when an msg object comes in from the JSON parser. The set the value previous to the value of current. You can get the variable current by using the flow get current. Now we can set the current variable to the distance we got in the payload of the msg object. 
We use an if statement to check if the previous value is smaller than 10 and if the current value is bigger than 10. If this is the case, we can increase the counter variable because seemingly the distance sensor just got abstracted by a new product. We now want to send the new count as a MQTT message to the UMH stack. To do that, we create a JSON payload with our current count of parts and the current timestamp using the date.now function. We can use the earlier process value topic again because this counter belongs to the same asset as before. The stack is automatically going to recognize the different name in the JSON payload count of parts. We return the message only if the if statement gets executed, so we also have to remove it on the bottom. Ah, and I already found a mistake. Now let's hit done and test the function by connecting it instead of the earlier flow to the MQTT out node. Hit deploy. We still see the old messages, so click on the trash icon to clear the lock. Now when I put my hand in front of the sensor and take it away, again, we get incoming messages. They consist of the current count of parts going up with the working Unix timestamp. Because we want to store the distance messengers and the count, we need to send both to the stack. That's why we connect the upper function node creating the distance process value messages also to the MQTT out node and hit deploy. Now we can see new distance messengers coming in at a high frequency and also occasionally a count message. Perfect. Popular ports and connectors in Node-RED are for example OPC OA, Siemens S7, TCP IP, REST API, Modbus and MQTT. This is also where you can see really the advantage of using Node-RED. You can use the Node-RED microservice for connecting all kinds of sensors, machines and other data sources and implement custom logic with relative ease as long as you make sure to send it to the stack in the correct format. MQTT and Node-RED is enough for most use cases. For fault-tolerant stream processing, for example complex logics, you should use Kafka in combination with your own microservice. Stay tuned for more. In the next video, all the work done until now pays off. We are going to configure a dashboard showing the distance and the number of counting parts using a Grafana microservice.